Greetings. This, re, uh, this devotion is for the 14th of December, and the reading is from 1 Kings 18, 1 through 8. After many days, the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year of the drought, saying, Go, present yourself to Ahab. I will send rain on the earth. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. The famine was severe in Samaria. Ahab summoned Obadiah, who was in charge of the palace. Now Obadiah revered the Lord greatly. When Jezebel was killing off the prophets of the Lord, Obadiah took a hundred prophets, hid them fifty to a cave, and provided them with bread and water. Then Ahab said to Obadiah, Go through the land to all the springs of water and to the wadis. Perhaps we may find grass to keep the horses and mules alive and not lose some of the animals. So they divided the land between them to pass through it. Ahab went in one direction by himself and Obadiah went in another direction by himself. As Obadiah was on the way, Elijah met him. Obadiah recognized him, fell on his face, and said, Is it you, my lord Elijah? He answered him, It is I. Go and tell your lord that Elijah is here. So, what's, what's going on here? This is the beginning, and, and really to get this entire story, you'd have to read to about 50. Um, which I encourage you to do, uh, but I won't do in this setting. Um, but this this leads to a, a major turning point and battle between Baal, Baal, okay, and um, the god of the Canaanites, um, primarily north, um, north, and or um, north east. Of, of Israel um, and and what we know is Israel now now kings is 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 just about that the the kingdoms Ahab was the king of Samaria or what we know as that northern section of Israel right um, Judah would have been the southern kingdom of, of Israel now the thing here is, and hopefully you caught it in the reading, there has been a three-year drought. Now, of course, we're in a desert climate to begin with. So they were desperate to survive. The lakes that they were at were salt lakes. They, 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 they were struggling to get water that they could use in any way, shape, or form. Right. <clears throat> the battle, what this is all setting up here, is Yahweh has said, I will bring rain, and then there becomes this battle. Jezebel gets involved, but between the gods of Baal or and Yahweh. And that's that's what you find if you read all of these verses. Right? Thing is, these stories of faith can speak to us. Whether these are exactly how things happened or they didn't isn't really the point here. We don't want to get too hung up in it. Um, but more so, it, it is a statement here that the Israelites had to trust in their God in the face of adversity, in the face of when it felt like God had abandoned them. And that maybe, you know, as they were suffering through this drought, that maybe they needed to believe in Baal, right? That's the struggle. And, and isn't that the case when we, when we get into tough times and they kind of stretch out and, oh man, does it feel that way now, right? We begin to wonder, well, then where is our God? 
and the temptations are strong to turn to something else who would respond in a way that we think they ought. This battle, the, 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 the story of this battle shows us that the popular or the stressful or there are so many things Right? That, that can draw us away from God. But in the end, that's exactly what hurts us. Because in the end of this story, God brought rain. In the end of the story, we understand as Jesus, God brought us eternal life. God always does. Pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.